Thank you for clicking on the AcronewsNow.com update. I'm Lindsay McCoy bringing you a look at the latest local news. Election day is Tuesday and we'll take another exclusive look at the candidates for Summit County Council. But our first top local story is two teens were killed in a single vehicle crash early Sunday morning along Truxell Road in Boston Township. The Summit County Medical Examiner's Office says it was around 3 o'clock in the morning when the driver lost control and went off the side of the roadway. The vehicle ran into several trees. 18-year-old Zachary Taylor of Wadsworth and 17-year-old Ryan Swiger of Cuyahoga Falls were pronounced dead at the scene shortly before 4 o'clock in the morning. A third person whose name has not been released at this time was taken to a local hospital with unreported injuries. Who was driving and the cause of this crash is still not known at this time. We will have more details on AcronewsNow.com as they become available. Akron's leaf pickup runs begin today. The city leaf pickups will be conducted by using one truck in council wards between now and early December. Akron Public Works Manager Paul Barnett says city residents should not put out their leaves early. He advises not to gather leaves in front of drains either because it can be hazardous. You can find the link to the city of Akron's ward by ward schedule in our story on AkronNewsNow.com. In our final installment of interviews with candidates who are seeking at large positions on Summit County Council, we talked with the two men bearing strong business and public service backgrounds. We wrap our candidate conversations with those seeking one of three positions open in the 2010 general election with incumbent Summit County Council President John Poda. He's from Green, he's a Democrat, and Republican challenger Bill Romer, a longtime Richfield resident who campaigns on his strong business background. Here's a look at our interview with Romer. One of the things I proposed is zero-based budgeting, where each of the departments, rather than being authorized X amount of dollars every year and then growing it by the rate of inflation, would have to justify each of their expenditures, their major expenditures. I think in that way you make sure that you're saving the appropriate um, programs, departments, and things like that, but at the same time the departments are justifying what they're doing on a yearly basis. When you talk about zero-based budgeting, how more intense is that than what they go through now? I don't know that it's that more intense, it's just a different process. Um, a lot of businesses do this, and as you mentioned, the Akron Beacon Journal endorsed me partially because of my business experience, and I would bring those types of techniques to Summit County Council. And next up is Poda. He's the incumbent president of County Council and seeking re-election as an at-large member. Here's a quick look at our portion of our interview. It's a, a tough thing right now, you know, you're trying to balance the jobs, we're trying to work on tax abatements. Uh, as president, I sit on the uh, board where we had the companies come in where they were looking at renewing and even though some of them didn't meet the promises they had made maybe a year or two ago, we had the school board members in there with us at the same time and pretty much as long as they were all moving forward and uh, attempting in this tough economy, we were all pretty much on board to keep them you know, working and help with their uh, tax structure to keep it viable. Rick. Talk to us about money and the, the role that that's playing with the county right now in terms of the cutbacks, the, the, the cost cutting that, that you guys have been doing? Well, you know, we had the, uh, in the last two years alone, we have cut the budget over $16 million. And, uh, you know, we've all worked on that legislatively to make that happen. You know, the problem you always have is when you have less revenue, uh, you know, have less money to put back out into the community as far as services. Uh, we also had 200 people that took uh, voluntary retirements and layoffs. And in conjunction with that, I, uh, as president this year, felt that, you know, we're asking people to take furloughs. We were asking them to, uh, uh, you know, take time off and not take pay raises. And I felt, all things considered, I actually donated 30 percent of my pay back this year, too, just to chip in and show that, you know, as a leader that I was doing my share. Um, I would say most of the job creation initially comes from the executive office as far as an idea, especially with some of these big corporations. Uh, we certainly sit in with him and get our input there and hope that it uh, is heard, and it usually is with uh, Executive Pry. You can learn more about our candidates and our full coverage on our website. Early voting continues through today at the Summit County Job Center at 1040 East Talmadge Avenue. It goes until 8 o'clock tonight. Weather is sometimes a factor in getting to the polls. As we look at the Akron area forecast for your election week, for today, 48 will be our high. Yeah, not very warm. Low of 31, mostly sunny skies. Election day, 50 degrees. Low of 31 degrees, mostly sunny skies, so no rain in the mix. As we look at the next five days, your warmest day will be Wednesday, 55 degrees. 
will be your high. Partly cloudy skies are expected. More cloud cover on Thursday, high of 47. And on Friday, we do have a chance for rain, snow, showers, and wind. Yeah, mix there. High of only 42 degrees. Continue to follow AcronewsNow.com for the latest local news, sports, weather, and traffic updates 24-7. And you can also follow our news updates on Facebook and Twitter, too. For AcronewsNow.com, I'm Lindsay McCoy.